discussion here. I, I really did, uh, and that might be quite nice to, to notice and to realize the difference that language makes in the creation of our reality. Because I wrote the original bedtime story based on the idea or on the word, German word Geschichte, which makes no difference between what is history and what is a story. So Geschichte combines and unites both. So in that way it's obvious up front that history is just a story. While of course the English wouldn't allow me to tell just the story, which is by the way telling the history <laughs> and how we make history through an analysis of second order cybernetics. So we redid this whole thing together and that's what we're gonna present now. Important maybe for you is that just like in the bedtime story, you won't be able to grasp everything. You know, when you're listening to a bedtime story and you leave out your mind, you go through the landscape that is told and you may forget this one mountain to the left and this one mountain to the right and just only later on you thought, oh, you know when the dragon flew over those mountains? That was just great. But instantly afterwards, you can't grasp everything. It's more about experiencing how you come out of this reality of the story that's being told, which is also like the, the main message which is behind that. That everything is real as much as it becomes part of a story. Because what doesn't become part of a story just never shows up. So in that way, it's all about that nothing and how that little going aside from nothing and being a little different from nothing just suddenly brings this whole universe into being. So in listening to it, I would suggest to have a very relaxed position. You can close your eyes at any times. You don't have to worry about forgetting about anything because that's the fine thing. You want to change the w wonderful, yes. That's the whole meaning about the introduction is maybe only that the light has changed it. <laughs> 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 Story changes the environment in which it is told. So you don't have to grasp everything. Just listen to Tom. It is like the whole history of my, mankind anyway about nothing. So there's nothing which can get lost. And with that, may I present you Thomas Cook, who will be Lucas Pavlik for a while. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you staying here? Yes. Okay. Systemic thinking, a bedtime story of the second order. This is how the story begins. The formless, when thought upon, talked about, or perceived, takes on its form through this. It is thus the form that makes all the difference, bringing some things into existence while others simply cannot appear. Or how my father liked to tease me when I was a child at the times before going to bed as the time of storytelling was drawing near. I'll just say it. What can't be said can't be put into words. What can be expressed will be expressed. Remember, everything goes as long as you remember that a camel does not go through the eye of a needle. In this way, most metaphors or allegories make good examples. Thinking about bedtime stories, for instance, you notice motives and dynamics that you can identify with and become a part of, although the stories themselves hold no claim to truth or effectiveness. The specifics and details of a good bedtime story are constructed in such a manner that even if on one hand you completely forget about them, the motives of the story and its effects still unfold. But on the other hand, if they are remembered, the details are interlinked in such a manner as to produce amazing possibilities of how the story can be read. It is in this manner we are able to find different emphases even completely different stories within the same bedtime story. We can thus experience the apparently same story over and over again and become completely immersed in the world which comes forth through this. The narrator of such stories plays a peculiar role, sometimes part of the story itself, 
sometimes emerging out of it at an unexpected moment, and at other times, just like an invisible conductor staying hidden in the background, skillfully leading us from one scene to the next without us ever becoming aware of his intentions. And still, it is his breath that carries us through the story. If we do not feel it anymore, the story begins to fade. It is up to the narrator to invent a form or system through which the contents of the story become plausible, to encourage us to follow the rhythm of the narration, to enable us to recognize its motives, ideas, within different forms, within our own world, within our very lives. Within the most wonderful, most complex bedtime stories, such as the Arabian Nights, for example, we experience a constant shift of perspectives in which all plots are interwoven, and the readers become absorbed, become part of the story themselves. Would it be a pleasure to co-invent such a story in which all of us feel embedded or even invited to reinvent ourselves? Let us consider this possibility for a moment. What could such a story be like, and what could it be about? If we want to move others through our story, we have to invent a story through which we are moved, a story we can vividly convey. Such a story would require a subject or theme in which everyone could participate. We would have to develop a system through which we can draw people into our story, something meaningful, something everyone can understand or grasp, a theme that concerns everyone, includes each individual person. A trick might help us to draw the reader's attention to a certain subject in suggesting how incredibly useful and important it could be for the readers to participate in this story. Maybe we could even argue that it could be possible to claim the position of a single supreme observer who could bind all stories into one story, his story. So every reader could be offered the possibility, the unique opportunity to enter it to become part of his story. But then we would have to invent reasons and arguments to systematically exclude all those stories which contradict his story, invent a system of concepts in which we measure all other stories by our standards, our particular notions. Naturally, it would be easy to extinguish other stories by maintaining that they are untrue, unproductive, unpromising, and don't correspond to the reality of our measurements. But in the long run, this kind of invention would certainly be more harmful than useful, as we would have, as in an encounter with others, a conflict with others. We would have to explain and justify our notions over and over again to prove their superiority, till in the end we would ourselves not know anymore what we exactly mean by true or untrue and why something is productive while something else isn't. Eventually, this reality of which we are constantly speaking of would in itself become strange and alien to us. Imagining the outcome of this his story, mistrusting oneself and always being at odds with all other people, regarding them as risks, we would be wise to develop a different perspective define and invent other kinds of concepts. Thus, it would be my proposal to invent a story in which two principles are predominant. First, that our story includes others and their stories. Second, that the story allows us to communicate about ourselves in a sensible manner. This second principle will become essential in the development of our story at a later point because if we indeed contradict ourselves in the unfolding of our narration, we require a method that allows us to integrate these contradictions into a meaningful whole. Otherwise, we would again arrive at a system in which what we are saying would exclude what we have already said, and all cycles of justification would start anew. Thus, this first part of our story might deal with this very form of narration, this special way of thinking, which introduces us into this system that allows us to include others and to communicate with ourselves. 
And since what we are about to develop is a kind of story which is about how to include others and a way of thinking to integrate their systems in our systems, systemic thinking might be an appropriate title for our story. Maybe we could, very much like in a bedtime story, gently slip away from all notions of domination and truth, delving into our story about stories, telling